Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, everybody on YouTube? This is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. And this package just came in. DHL knocked on my door about three hours ago. This is the Shorecom SF401 Plus Frequency Counter and CTCSS DCS decoder. Uh, this comes from Radio Diddy or Radiodity.com, R A D I O D D I T Y.com. The link is in the description below. Check them out. This is pretty new, it's in inexpensive, but I needed something for future videos when I test some uh, handhelds, uh, some China model, hand model handhelds, and some other ones. And it's a good piece of test gear to have just handy without spending a lot of money where you can uh, identify the frequency, make sure your radio is on frequency, and you can use that for that old Motorola radio you might have sitting uh, in the closet and you're not sure what frequency it does. This thing will tell you what it's transmitting at and if there's any tones involved. Great for if you want to use it for a commercial business band radio and identify what frequencies they're on. Um, but in the box, it's very pretty straightforward. You get the unit, the USB charge cable, the antenna with BNC adapter, and the uh, adapter 110, um, you know, European or US adapter with the USB on the output, okay? So this this uh, unit will go 27 to 3 gigahertz, 27 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. And uh, the manual does say from 27 to 100 megahertz, it is it may not be as accurate. So if you're using this for 11 meters or you're using this for 10 meters, it may be, I haven't tested it yet, it may be fine, but they're not guaranteeing the accuracy at those frequencies. Um, so keep that in mind, but it should work just fine, at least be in the ballpark. Um, so looking at the unit, it's pretty straightforward. The battery is inside, it's very light. This thing is about as light as a pack of cigarettes. I mean, it's not heavy at all. It fits in your pocket, it's pretty small. Um, four buttons on the front, power button on the left. And on the top, there's your USB uh, charging port here, the antenna connector, and this is a signal attenuator, negative, or a, a 10 dB attenuator on the top. So to turn it on, you hold the power button, so you see the dots go away, it powers on, okay? And it brings you straight into the uh, frequency and CTCSS decode. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, just in a basic video here, I have a couple handhelds. I have my ICOM ID51 that does analog and digital D-Star. I have a Luton LT8W dual band, analog only. This is a seven watt handheld. Review coming up on that soon, any day now. I also have the Titera MD390 with GPS. That video is coming up as well. This is Motorola Moto Turbo uh, uh, TDMA. And uh, so I'll just use each of these as a demonstration to show you. It does do analog and digital. So you can use this for your DMR or D-Star units. Um, so to start, uh, basically what I'll do is I'll use the 7 watt here first off, okay? I have that set on top to 147 megahertz. So I can hit start here and I just transmit. Oh, wait a minute. Start. There we go. There we go. Okay. 147 megahertz. 147. There you go. Okay. So you can see the signal bar here, um, right under the 147. You have to be pretty close. Uh, you know, the signal will vary. You know, it's very, the reason it's that sensitive is because this thing, if, if, uh, if it was that sensitive where you didn't have to be right next to it, you'd pick up the Wi-Fi frequencies, you'd pick up radio stations, anything would just block this out. So it's pretty much, uh, it looks like you have to be right up on this thing, maybe an inch from the antenna to get an accurate reading at 147. Okay, that's analog. You can see the tone is 67 hertz. I put that on there as a PL tone of 67. Um, so you just have to make sure that when you transmit into it, that you're right next to it, okay? Now, uh, I will, let's see, we'll use the uh, the Titera. This is not even programmed yet, so whatever frequencies came on it, uh, they're UHF only, I think they're 4, 454 or 452, but I'll turn this on. And what you wanna do is you wanna hit, 
if you look at the buttons here on the unit, the third button over says digital. You notice in the top it's on digital and yellow, and then it goes to analog. So I'll put this in digital, and I'll transmit with the MD390. 453, let's see, there you go, 453.625. That's what comes with, uh, you know, they, they put some test frequencies in there, so I don't have anything programmed yet. But you do see that it's coming up under, uh, it is coming up under the digital format with the DMR, all right? So with the ICOM, what I'll do is I'll put this first in analog, Let's see, FM. Okay. 445.000. Okay. Oh, I'm in digital. Excuse me. Analog. There we go. All right. 445.000. That's an ICOM radio, so you would expect it to be right on frequency like that. Now, what's what's interesting is to see D-Star digital on this, you leave the unit in analog. When you put it on digital, for some reason, it doesn't pick up the D-Star. So I'll put this in digital, DV mode, okay? And we should still, here, I'll even change the frequency to uh, 445725, right? So with the D-Star, I noticed that you just leave the unit in analog, but as with DMR Moto Turbo, you have to switch it into digital. Um, it might be the format of what this is looking for um, compared to you know what you're using. So uh, you know you can see that that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, it's a neat device altogether because if if again if I have a little FRS radio that I didn't program and I have and I want to see what frequency it is, I could use that. I could also use it just to make sure I'm on frequency. If I was transmitting on 445.725 and I was seeing 445.753, I'd know I'm a little off frequency see if I was having an issue. Um, so by hitting the menu button or the, the first button, a short press just gets you into the menu. A long press is how to turn it on and off. But uh, you can see up and down here, I can go in the system and you know, there's some functions in here um, or not functions, but uh, specifications, um, you know, that you can, if you wanted to change, I could change the auto power off to Right now it's two minutes, okay? But I don't recommend playing with anything else as far as the CTS divide base or the offset or the uh, decimal or whatnot. Just, you know, you could leave that alone. Um, but you could change, see the LCD dim here, I can go ahead and change that to a higher number. So that way the LCD is not dimming so quickly, okay? Uh, and uh, going down here to about, I could see the uh, the model, okay, the firmware version that it's running. And to turn it off, just hold the power button until you see it count down to zero. And let go, it's off, okay? It's a pretty straight up, straightforward unit, okay? SF401 Plus, RadioOddity.com. Check that out, and I'll make sure I, uh, I be, I'll be i use this in uh, future videos when I'm doing such uh, reviews like the Luton LT8W that's coming up next. And uh, I got some other videos, so stay tuned. But uh, thanks for checking this out, and the link is in the description. Go, uh, go check it out yourself. This is KJ4YZI73.